performance. This is the 12th anniversary of the club and the 23rd performance of the club, the Performing Arts Club, which was founded in the year 2011. Rabindranath Tagore's Red Oleanders, written in 1925, is a masterful play that celebrates the beauty of life and its transient nature while beckoning human mankind to ruminate upon deep issues that plague society. Consistent with other works by the author, the play is concerned with social issues such as caste, class, and gender traditional customs. Tigor envisioned social and economic reforms to improve society and offer equality to all individuals. Now, before I introduce the character of today's play, I would like to share a few lines from one of Tagore's novels, Sheshir Kovita, or The Last Farewell, which is very much in line with the play today. Can you hear the sounds of the journey of time? Its chariots, always in a flight, raise its heartbeats in the skies, and birds pangs of stars, Crushed by the wheels. My friend, I've been caught in the net, cast by that flying time. It has made me its maid in its trepid journey and taken me in its speeding chariot far away from you. To reach the summit of this morning, I seem to have left behind many deaths. My past names seem to stream in the strong wind. Born of the chariot's mind, there is no way to turn back. If you see me from far afar, do not mourn for me. You have your work, I have my world. My vessel has not become empty. To fill it is my mission. I shall be pleased if anybody keeps waiting anxiously for me. But now I shall offer himself to myself to him who can brighten the darkness with light and see me as I am, transcending what is good or bad. Whatever I gave you, it is now your absolute possession. What I have to give you now are the hourly offerings from my heart. You are incomparable, you are rich. Whatever I gave you, it was but your gift. You made me so much indebted, as much as you took. My friend, farewell. These lines demonstrate a common thread in Tagore's words, his beliefs that a better society and a better world were possible. Now, let me introduce the characters you will meet. The protagonist of the play is Nandini. is shackled in Yaksha town, a totalitarian society infested with greed and classism. She depicts a breath of freedom and fresh air. Her defiance of the king and the many characters who, who uphold his status quo points to the path for salvation. Nandini is searching for her beloved Ranjan, who is another rebellious spirit. Next, we have the governor. Who is a corrupted official representing the red tape and bureaucracy that made justice inaccessible for the working class of Tagore's time. He's one of the most powerful men in town but lacks empathy. 
He's filled with greed and an insatiable thirst to quell the rebellious fight of Yaksha town by the freedom fighters. Go say it. chants the names of the gods to uphold, as other characters do, the oppressive status quo. He tries to ensure the conformity of the town's citizens through his invocation of spiritual forces. Vishu. He falls in love with Nandini and recognizes in her a kindred spirit. He composes and sings songs for her. His love for her is second only for his love for a society where righteousness reigns supreme. Kishore is a young boy whose naive demeanor and childish character contrasts sharply from other residents of Yaksha town who are bound by the shackles of greed and social custom. The professor. <laughs> is wise and understands the discriminatory ways of the Yaksha town. He is another character who loves Nandini and believes that she can change the perception of the people living in Yaksha town. Gokul <laughs> is the paragon of the town folk who conforms to laws and traditions regardless of their justice. He considers the rebellion that Nandini represents as witchcraft and tries to suppress and control it. Pavula is a true believer in the orthodox ways of the repressive Yaksha town and its totalitarian regime. We also have the headband. lackeys who tries to imprison and threaten Ranjan, Nandini's beloved, into submitting to Yaksha town's oppressive system. The deputy governor, he arrives on scene to convey the message of Ranjan's condition and is aware of the power of the revolution started by Nandini. The guard, of Yaksha town. He represents the brutality of the judicial system. He follows and upholds the totalitarian regime without thinking. Finally, we have the anonymous man. He is one of the soldiers who supports the dictatorial regime of Yaksha town by assisting during the flag worship day. Well, now I present to you Rabindranath Tagore's Red Oleanders performed by the members of the RTC's Performing Arts Club. Why don't you just 
talk about knowledge again and simply fast life. Do not understand that you need chapter in the stuff and stop. What need are you all meat? Well, if you talk of meat, then you can look over there. You will see our tone to this people out of all flight lines and each can be to me. In this large city, our sacred treasure is our task. The secret treasure of our city. But nothing. The gold has to be both. There's not the task. Over and over again you say this to me, Professor. Tell me, what makes you wonder as we go? The light which leans to the forest pictures. That surprises no one. But the light which leans to the crack wall. Now that's a different name. As you are that light, that light that's not from me. Tell me, what do you think of this place? It puzzles me to see a whole city thrusting inside that above, groping with both hands in the dark. You think tunnels we are to and come up with dead blood that the earth has buried for ages past? The gin of that dead blood will be invoked. If we can enslave him, the whole world lies at our feet. But then again, you hide your king behind the wall. Is it for fear of you for finding out that he's a man? As the gin of our dead blood is fearfully returns, so is our ghostly royalty made easy by that man. All you say is a kind of thought. Of course. It's made up. <laughs> It delights me immensely to discuss philosophy with you. It's strange. You will work a day and night in a master bill of cases, and your tickets in the bowels of the earth. How are these your time on you? Well, I mean, one's privilege of wasting time to one's wealth of time. We poor dredges being trapped in the city. But you're not. Looking at you brings us immense peace. Maybe you could come to my room later, and perhaps you could allow me to be reckless. I'll come to see your people soon. How can you pass the last week? I shall find my way to the network. Gentlemen, I too live behind the left of scholarships. You are laughing at me, Professor. But tell me, when did God be here? Why didn't they bring my hand in Moscow? It is their way of snatching things by fractions. But why would you want to bring your life <laughs> treasure here and trap him here with us? Because I know that you can put a beating heart behind this dead prison of mine. Your own puzzling is your own presence is puzzling love for our governors. If your relatives come to the shore, they won't despair. They do not know how far we dare. Ransom could bring God's own laughter and medicine and stop them in the But no, divine laughter is a sunlight which can only melt ice, but never the stones. My Ransom's strength is like that of the person here. It is not. Thank you. 
Dios, what would I do there? It's the simple which is impossible for me. Leave me now, I have no time. What is that to fear? The living heart of the earth gives itself up in life and love and beauty. But when you rend it, you will not stop it. You bring up it to the cut of the dark demons. Blind in heart, cruel and envious. Don't you see that everyone here is eager, either angry, suspicious, or, suspicious or afraid? Cursed? Yes, the curse of gravity is given. But we bring up strength. That's not my strength. Please, you, Nandini. You too are half hidden behind a vision of mystery, of beauty. I want to pluck you out, to grasp you within my close fist, to hand you, scrutinize you, or else break you to pieces. Whatever do you mean? Why can't I straight out the tin of your oleanders and build a dream out of it, to keep it before my eyes? Those few frail petticoats hinder me, and did you that same hindrance, so strong because so soft, nothing. Will you tell me what do you think of me? No, no, don't go. Do tell me, what do you think of me? Have I not told you all from the night? I think you are wonderful. Strength swelling up in your arms like brutally cast in for a stone. It makes my heart dance to you. And when your heart dances to your dungeon, is that also? Let that be, you have no time. There's time, only for this. Only tell me, then go. Let dance to the mistake, you won't understand. I will, I must understand. Tell me at least, do you like me? Yes, I like you. The same as Roger? Again the same question. I'm telling you, you don't understand these things. I do understand a little. I know what the difference between me and Roger. In me, there's only strength. In Roger, there's magic. What do you mean by magic? Shall I explain? On the ground, there are blocks of stone. I am gold. They have the image of strength. On the surface grows the glass. The flower blossoms, they have the day of magic. I can extract gold from fierce and depth of secrecy, but to rest that magic for near and hand I fail. You have no end of things. Why don't, yet why don't do you always covet? All I possess is so much dead weight. <coughs> if I had Rungeon's youth, I could leave you free and yet hold you fast. My time is spent in knotting the binding rope, but alas, everything else can be kept tied except joy. You will never understand. I am a desert. Stretch out my hand to you, a tiny blade of grass, and cry, I'm past, I'm bare, I'm weary. One would never keep you as you're tired. One day, underneath, in the far off land, I saw a mountain as weary as myself. I could not guess that all the stones were aching devotedly. One night, I heard a noise, as some giant evil dream had moaned, and suddenly snapped. The next morning, I found that the mountain disappeared in the chasm of the yawning earthquake that gave and stand our overgrown power crushed itself in worthy as some way. I see in you something else. What is it you see? The dance rhythm of the all. I don't understand. Rhythm that lights the enormous weight of matter. In that rhythm, the bands of stars and planets go about, dancing from sky to sky. I saw many mystical boys. It is that rhythm Nandini that makes you so simple, so perfect, how small you are compared to me, yet I envy you. It is you who cut yourself from everyone, so deprived yourself. I keep myself barred. That may become easy for me to plunge out the world's big trade houses. Nevertheless, there are gifts that your little flower-like fingers can easily access. But with all the strength of my body, gifts hidden in the God's close hand, that I must Oh, open someday. When you talk like that, I don't want to see people. Go then. Here, I stretch out my hand of mine from the window. Place your hand on it for a moment. Oh, dear. It's right in me. Everybody flies away from me because they only see my hand. But if I wish to hold you with all of me, would you come to me, Nandini? Why talk like that when you won't even let me into your room? My busy time, although it would work, drags along obstruction. Not for you.
Is it in our holiday? Yesterday was the first day of the world goddess, and today they worship the fact. Most you drink just because it's a holiday. In our village home, on feast days, you never free the food was enough for the holidays in our village. In Yashtam, holidays are more of meals and sad work. Let's go back home then. The road to our home is closed forever. How's that? Our homes doesn't shelter them any profit. But are we close if you teach them promise only? Like house to grains of corn. But nothing of that over. Our bad wish says to remain holy is useful only for the damn stuff. Those who eat it prefer to live out its horns and hooves, and even of these to its legs and branches. There's the lad yet singing as he goes. It's only the last few days that his songs have burst forth. That's true. He's been posted by Nandini. She draws his heart. But his songs too gorgeous. Indeed, you better be careful. She makes me bring you out songs from the church. You should be rough on our neighbors. That which is up to all kinds of trees. Be sure to bring his fortune. Be sure his fortune is not in recent. He knew London in all before coming here. I said, be sure, come this way. Maybe you'll find somebody here also to listen to your singing. They won't be able to get it thrown away. Man of my friends! Man of my friends! I know who the good name of your dream is. How should you know for myself? You haven't seen my boat from inside. Your boat is going to get stripped to one of these days. Let me tell you, buy that fat money of yours. Yes, what's this now? She does nothing. That's her up. I don't understand the way she goes on. I know the atmosphere of this place. Contempt for beauty. There must be to see even in hell. But nobody can understand it. That's the cruelest punishment. Maybe we are fools. But even our family here can't stand us. You know that. Take care. Yes, we can get the infection of the governor's eyes. Perhaps you are too ready to the side of us. What's your problem? Uh, to tell you the truth, brother, when I see Nandini, I feel ashamed of myself. I can't hurt her work when she is here. So you can trust me just that I've been enough to understand. <laughs> well, brother, let's fly from here. Could I go on the under the blue canopy? Alas, the road is closed, and we seek consolation in the prison house. Prison house. No police can, no laser for us. We have distilled all the essence of songs and laughter in one liquid fire. The day will come with you when you know at your cost. Perhaps too late. You will have a fair wish. You have gone to the in your town, but I haven't changed at all. Haven't you? No, never. If yes, you go in our house and above the twelve, for a reason unknown to you. But I know, it's your dream of hope that lashes on your walk, more severely than Fortune's will. Very well. Then why don't you try from here and go back home? Your government has closed the way as well as will be done. If you go there by today, you will like here by tomorrow. Like a cage, what do you skate? Hang her in front, drop food. I see, Vishu. Once upon a time, you came very near spawning your eyesight pouring over the world. How is it they made you fly the sketch along with us, the stupid world? All this time, we have been here. But we haven't got from you the answer to this particular question. Yes, we all know it. Well, how do you take that? They employed to spy on us. Then how does it let, let me off of that? But we also know the game was not, not in your mind. How is it you couldn't stick to such a comfortable job, brother? A comfortable job? I said, my health is failing. Poor thing said the governor. How can you go home in such a state? There's no harm in trying. Well, I did. And then found out, as soon as one enters the yard, box at all, his jaws are fast, and, and the open road she lives within water. Now, I'm sunk into that interior without hopes and without dreams. And the only difference between you and me is that the governor's looks upon me, even worse than upon you. What does that matter, Bishop? You have tried to write no still. Discovery only means that, when you have never thought, you have passed the governor's lands. What? What will do you want to finish? The calendar never records the last day. After the first day comes the second day. After the second day comes the third day. We <laughs> both are getting to be here. We are not sticking one year, two year, three year, and never have a confusion. That's why we are not mind to them, but only on numbers. Brother, 
They have ordered such a heaps of gold. Can't they stop digging now? There's always an end to the things of need. We will stop when we have enough to eat. In this season, my villages are preparing for the harvest festival. Let's go home. In these parts, there are high roads to everyone, except to the homeland. But if we were to go to the governor and just tell him? Yes. If yes. Yes. Your, yes. Nice and polished like a coconut seed. Which bit do you want to have the soft house that the kids in such kind of honor to the if you want to? Oh, thank you, the governor. Then he's sure to go over to us. Well, my child, grant this leave to go home for a little. Why? Are the rooms that we have given you excellent, much better than the ones back at home? We have even kept tissue a stable in it for a safety. Sir Governor, your gesture does not reassure me. Have my feet had this had my feet had this time to make other stuff? Would I have not run out from here first thing? I think that once next time we we'll want to walk straight. Sir Governor, give us leave. Do give us leave. Let us just go for once and see our bathing fields of prairie corn and an ambush as of one young tree with, with its hanging wood. I cannot tell you how our hearts are. Don't you see how your men works all the day in the dark and in the evening set themselves into tents of dark of darkness? Have you no pity for that? My dear sir, surely you will know of our constant anxiety for their welfare. That is exactly why I have sent our high teacher, Henry Bosan himself, to give a more talk to the men. That won't do, sir. Now, at first, he gets drunk up in evening. But if we were to preach every night, there will be a man's slaughter. Understand this thing, but one thing I do understand, and 
lettuce. The less we may make of the girls, the more she attracts us. Well, Madam, have you heard the other song this morning? Is the morning like yours? That I should hear singing? In my grand I thought of Canada, but you joined in the song. But the God would not let me come to you. I'm not a rampart. You are my rampart. When I come to you, I seem to climb high and find you even more. Ever since coming to you, Mr. <coughs> the sky has grown all, grown all of my life. I felt as if they had found it in the same water with all faction of man here. And all of us in the same soul long. And you can and look look into my face that make me sure the sunlight can be seen even to me. In this close port, a fit of sky will rise only between you and me, my mad one. Through that sky, my son can fly towards you. <laughs> For my friend, I, I wanted to ask you, where, 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 where did you go off to all those years when I had no use of you for so long? Yes, you are my messenger from, from only table school. The day you came to exit out, the blast of salt of my heart. But I never had any listen to this sorrow of which you speak. Not even from Raja? No, he holds it over his each hand and bears me to the stormy waters. Desperately, he takes his all on the game and thus he has won me. You were also there with us. But you stood alone, and at last, something like you one day to leave our gambling. In the time of your pardon, you looked at my face in a way I could not quite make out. And after that, I had no use of you for so long. Tell me where you went off to then. My boat was tied to the bank, rope snapped, and the wild wind dropped to tackle somewhere. But who dragged you from there to dig nugget tail in your sit on? A woman. How could she touch you? One day, while I was gazing at the sunset cloud, she had her eye open the golden spire. Her glass challenged me to take her over there. While in my foolish pride, I go to do so, and then take her under the golden spell. And my spell was broken. Oh, my dear friend. Well, I've come to take you away from here. <coughs> Since you have moved even the king of this place, what power on earth can prevent you? Tell me, don't you feel afraid of him? I did fear him from outside the screen, but now I've seen him inside. What, is, what does he look like? He was like a man from the abyss, his forehead like a gateway of a tower, and his arms, iron bows of some inacceptable forces. What did you do when you went inside? The falcon was sitting on his left wrist. He sat it on a perch and gazed at my face. And just as he came stroking the falcon's wings, he began to turn his throat my hand. Then after a while, he suddenly asked me, Nothing, don't you fear me? Not in the inside. And then after that, he buried his fingers in my unbound hair and sat long with his closed eyes. How do you like it? Yes, I liked it. Shall I tell you how? It was as if you were a thousand year old band in I, And now, I thank him for the words. What did he say to you? Starting off and fixing his fair point gaze on my face, he suddenly asked me, Nandini, I want to know you. I felt a shiver down my body <laughs> and asked, What is that you know? I'm not a manuscript. I know there is a manuscript said he. But I don't know you. Then he became excited and cried, tell me about him, tell me how you love him. Then I talked on about him, and he listened quietly, staring at me like a big, creepy boy. Then all of a sudden, he startled me by screaming, could you die for him? This very moment I replied, no, he shouted almost as his anger. Yes, I could, I do. What good would I do you? I don't know, I replied. Then he raised and shouted, Go away from my room, go, go at once, and don't disturb me in my world. I could not understand what that meant. He gets angry when he can't understand. But will you, don't you take pity for him? The day when the God put pity on him, he will die. No, no, you don't, don't talk like that. You don't know what that's going to happen. You don't know what his living means. Look there, there's the governor's shadow. I'm sure he's heard everything. Look, he's saying. These are the governor's shadows. It's everywhere. Do you like it? I've never seen anything like this. Yes, cut off from mine. He will hear you. He hears even when you are silent. When I used to when I used to be with the figures, I tried to avoid gender at every stage. But when I meet you, my my mind wants to be cautious. No, no, you must not go to India. Take up the government. Hello, Vishnu. You seem to be making friends with everybody without a distinction. 
You may remember that I began by making friends even with you. <laughs> we are discussing how to escape from the darkness of yours. Really? What is the darkness that you don't even mind, Professor? What's the matter? Whether it is openly confessed or not. <laughs> the captains want to blow that we are aware of, but their knowledge to NPTs has become epidemic. Who do that and do you think it is <clears throat> Yeah, fly away from my fist. 
as the door flies away from the shadow of the hall. Very well. I'll go and not vex you anymore. Yeah, listen, nothing. Come back. What is it? On your face, there's a play of light. In your eyes and lips, at the back of your flows of black hair, the silent ball of death. The other day, when my hand sank into it, it fell and saw a calm of time. I longed to sleep with my face, hidden inside those thick black clusters. You don't know how tired I am. Don't you ever sleep? I feel afraid to sleep. Enough! Enough! Stop your singing! He's let the dead frog there and disappear. He's a figure of songs. The old frog yells to die when he hears singing. That's why he feels afraid. My mad dog, why is there a strength like one of us, like the distant stars in the sky? Yes, that's with me. I shall meet you under today. How? Now we tell you. Every day, a fair, fair of blues will come and sit on the pomegranate tree by my window. And every night before I go to sleep, I salute to the four star and say, Sacred star of constancy, if I am to meet my land, let the feather of the blue face find its way into my bed. Today, as soon as I woke up, there was a feather on my bed. Look, here it is. When landing comes, I'll put this on its bed. They say, Ruth Hope brings an omen of victory. And landing's way to victory like tomorrow. Where are we going? On? To the wayside by the children. Whose brother, the John, had the bravado to challenge the king to a wrestling match. 
but the king can't even be seen. That would cut you on his nose, and he's been angry ever since. Doesn't it all make for their well being just to keep watch over this man till day and night? <laughs> well being. There's no question of well in it at all, Nami. Only being, and the being has spread father and father. That until and unless millions of men are put to work, no one else can hold his weight. You see, they must exist. Must they? If it is necessary to die in order to live like men, what harm in dying? <sighs> Again, that anger. The wild cry of the red oleander, it is sweet, no doubt. But, whatever is true is true. If it gives you pleasure to say that one must die in order to live, then say so by all means. But, those who are alive are those who say that the others must die and that they themselves must live not anymore. Oh! 
Please, God, take me in exchange for Bishu. Don't be silly. No, I must go. Nandini, the bloodhounds of the governor, they're already after me. Instead of being taken like an animal without any dignity, I want to go. Please, take me. No, no, do not talk like that. No, 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 it won't do for you. Not for the warrior. There is a walk for you. A dangerous walk. Nandan has arrived. You must find him out. Do you have any message for him? This is Kamilomat now. May you both be united once again. That you need to no longer give me any message. I shall be able to forget that I have sent you away as a hand and what has that for for a return cost from me? The play of the field has ended. Field master is taking rice from home. God, let's not linger anymore! <laughs> <laughs> I could not understand all that he said. 
danger. How, how could I? How could I save him? We want him to be free from the tyranny of safety. We don't understand this thing. If you can't bring him back, you have to pay for it. I will go and gather a big crowd from the one man's land, smash the prison gate. I'll come with you. What for? To join in the breaking. And if you haven't done quite enough breaking it already, you sorceress. <laughs> <laughs> that witch must be burned alive before everything else. That would be a punishment enough. First, know of the beauty of past with which she goes about bringing the people. That as we do, let this hammer have a statue on the birthday. Oh, Google, the time has the to come to show your prowess. But not with fighting a dog. Come and with me. I will show you what to fight. <laughs> And he shall come again. 
for the noble cause of watching and enacting a visionary play by Rabindranath Tagore himself, I, on behalf of the Performing Arts Club, would like to thank the college management, college management for their kind support that made today's play not only plausible, but also a great success too. I would also like to invite the people from the backstage, namely Sangeet Dolma, Solam Yamchin and Rinjin Dema on the stage and thank them for their contributions. Next, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude towards our mentors, Madam Milan and Madam Kimi, for their constructive criticism that helped us to understand and improve our performance. We would also like to request Madam Kimi and Madam Milan to come on the stage, please.
Mass Communication Department also has our sincerest gratitude because he has helped us with the technical aspects of bettering the overall quality of our performance. So, sir, we would like to invite you on the stage, please. Amongst us, a special guest, Madam Cathy, who is one of the founding members of the club. Madam, can we also have you on the stage, please? Madhav sir for the costumes and, and Rudrarup sir for recommending the play that we performed today. Sirs, we would like to invite you both on the stage too, please. Thomas and his technical team too for their continuous assistance in terms of sound and lighting. Finally, on behalf of the members of our club, I would also like to thank Ma'am Swati Chakraborty for being the best club advisor who has guided and been kind to us at every step of the play. thanks and announcing our next play. As I, the present club coordinator, is graduating this semester, I would like to hand over the responsibilities of the club to Nangi Chirin from Anthropology, who is taking over the responsibility of the new club coordinator. It will be from the next semester when we will be performing the play Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Thank you once again and have a pleasant evening.